My name is William Justice. Today we're going to create this circular hypnotic effect in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. And then I'm going to play around with some of the different repeating patterns and animations to see what different kind of looks we can get. This video is more of a quick experiment. I'm really wanting to try to get more videos out, but my normal videos take a lot of time to put together. So while I was working on those, I thought I'd do some quick experiments, and if I have something interesting to show, I'll make a video about it. This pattern effect is really easy to set up in Fusion. It's amazing the different things you can do with just a simple fast noise node. We're gonna turn this into this with just a few adjustments to the fast noise. So here are a few of the different things you can do with this technique. With some colors and maskings and a few effects, we can create some really interesting animations. If you're new to my channel, make sure that you check out my website for all the different tools, tips, and videos that I've made. The tools and downloads are available for free. This includes the Power Grid, the Shapeshifter, Animate Express, Animated Borders, and a whole lot more. Along with each of the tools, I've made a video that goes over all the details of how they were created so you can learn all the techniques that I'm using. I want to try a quick experiment. Stare at the screen for just a little bit. Okay, done. I think that's how it works, and now you have to do what I say. So, if you enjoy my videos, subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Leave comments or questions below. Did it work? I hope so. I'd really love to hear from you. Now let's make some hypnotic circles and patterns. And as with most things, there's probably a lot of different ways to create this effect. Okay, so we're in Fusion, and the first thing we're gonna do is take a background node and drag that into the node area and connect it up to the media out. It's always a good way to start. So to add fast noise, it's this little icon here, and we're gonna take that and drag it into the node area. With the fast noise selected, we're gonna hit one on the viewer to see what we get. So um, if you haven't used the fast noise before, it just creates some random patterns and some random noise. You can make some adjustments um, and it's animatable with the seed rate and things like that. So it's, it's pretty, that's kind of basically what it does. But there's a lot of options that let you adjust the pattern that you get with the fast noise. So what we're gonna do is let's reset the node and we're gonna click this color tab here. And this lets us adjust the colors of the pattern. So we can do like a red or black to put that into the pattern. Let's reset that. So what we're gonna do is instead of, instead of using two color, we're gonna click this and we're gonna set up a gradient. And that's gonna allow us to choose two colors and a gradient. And for this animation, we're gonna stick with black and white. You could really use whatever you want, but black and white works great because uh, it makes it really easy to use as a mask, which that's how we're gonna be doing some of these effects. So there's different gradient types. You can do linear, and let's put this right here. And that basically just makes a line. So you can see that the waviness in here, let's get rid of that this waviness by going to the first tab and we'll just take the detail all the way down and take the contrast down like that. And there we just have this line and it's it basically a simple gradient is what we've created. And this is the it's set, the gradient type is linear. You can set the beginning and end points of the gradient either over here in the inspector or by dragging these around. Um, for this one, obviously we don't want a line. There's different options and we're gonna choose the radial gradient. And that lets us set up a, a gradient and you can see that the gradient goes from black to white, let's zoom in here, and you can see it's black here and it goes to white, and that's exactly the same thing we get in this gradient. So it's going from black to white. Now we could put that at red, and it's gonna go from red to white. But that's how this works. Getting the repeating pattern is super simple. All you gotta do is go down to the bottom and look for repeat. And we want this pattern to repeat not just one time right here, but we're gonna have it keep repeating over and over again. So it's gonna go from black to white to black to white. And we're gonna set it to repeat. And you can see that it's going from black to white, and then it's gonna start over at black again and go to white. So what we can do, if we adjust these like that, you can see that we got a black and white pattern. So it's going from black, right? And this, because these are closer together, there's a harder, the edge is harder. So when you move it apart a little bit, you can see a gradient in between there and move them a little bit closer together. And that gradient is gonna get smaller and we're gonna get more of a, a solid edge like that. Now one of the things that you'll see here is that there's a this is pixelated right in here. And that's the border between this right here, the end of the white, and the beginning of the black. Um, so we're gonna clean that up. I'm gonna put this right here and drag the white. Each one of these arrows is where that color starts on the gradient. So we're gonna start out at black. We're gonna take this white arrow and move it a lot closer over there to, to clean up that edge. That's the edge right there. To fix the pixelated edge, Move that a little bit closer. To fix the pixelated ed edge, we're gonna click in here to create a new color point right here. And that's, we're gonna leave that as white. And then we're gonna click to the right of that, add a new color point, and we're gonna make that black. And th there's this gradient right here. You can see right here. So all we need to do is move these closer together. 
about like that and zoom out and there we got our circle pattern now there's a couple different options you can do here this little bar here this is the length of the gradient so if you pull this out the gradient which we have going from black to white is going to be a lot a lot longer so you're going to get bigger circles you put it closer together you're going to get a lot smaller circles so this is the this is the basic pattern right here you can take the center this the start and end and move it anywhere on the screen so these are these points here this is where the gradient starts and where it ends so we can move the start point and move the end point and these are also animatable to create some really interesting effects let's go ahead and put it back in the center so we're going to set the start at 0.5 and the y at 0.5 the start x and y at 0.5 so it's right in the center let's make some smaller circles like that now to animate this right above the repeat down here is an offset and you can see as we change the offset it's just shifting where that gradient is and we're going to use an expression you could keyframe this but we're going to go ahead and use an expression we're going to right click on offset and say expression and we're going to do time divided by 25 and that means that as the time changes the the offset is going to change. So you see it's playing through and you see the offset is just going to keep going up as the time goes up. If you're interested in how the expression worked here with the time, I have quite a few videos so you can go to my channel and find some of my expression videos and I talk a lot about how to use these to create your animations. Now we're going to take the fast noise and use it as a mask on a background so we can create some in really interesting color effects. So let's take a background. Um, the main background is black and we're going to take this new background and put it right on top of the black background and we're gonna make it a, a four corner gradient. Let's just kind of set this up here real quick. Okay, so there's our, there's our background and this is sitting on top of black. We're gonna use each of these circles and they're gonna mask out the areas of our gradient background. So let's take the fast noise and put it into the mask input and nothing really happened. And the reason is that, the reason for that is because this mask does not have any alpha channels on it. So it's just a solid, it's a solid thing. So there's two ways to fix this. We could go into um, go into the background node and hit this little icon here to get to the settings. And as opposed to masking based off the alpha channel, because there is no alpha coming out of the fast noise, we can set it to use the luminance. And right there, so it's gonna use the luma value. So everywhere where it's white and really bright, you're gonna see our background. And everywhere where there is no luminance in the black, the main background is gonna come through. So if we hit background one, um, we can change it to like a like a yellow or something. So um, you can see how that's kind of masking out. Let's reset that. The other way to do this is let's go to the um, back to the background, and we're going to set it back to alpha. We can actually put the alpha into our fast noise. So let's try that. So let's do fast noise, and we just need to click this point right here, and this is the black point, and take the alpha on the black all the way down. And you can see that it's starting to come through. Let's set the second black one right there and bring the alpha all the way down. So we've basically done the same thing and you can see that our mask right here now has some alpha in it. Now let's use the fast noise to create some interesting patterns. So let's go back to the first option on the fast noise and we can bump up the detail and the contrast and all of a sudden we have these interesting patterns here. So the more detail you get, it's gonna get real kind of sharp and rough and the contrast is going to adjust the patterns there. So lower detail is gonna be a little bit smoother and higher contrast is gonna make, kind of make it a little wobbly. We can also adjust the scale so a lot of different things we can do here and even adjust the seethe rate and it'll get really crazy. Okay, let's uh, let's reset all of those things. We've kind of put those back to the defaults and take the detail down so we have our basic circles. So I wanted to show you how to create the uh, the swirly pattern where it's all kind of connected in the middle. So um, outside of our fast noise, we're gonna add a coordinate space node. So hit um, shift space and type in coordinate. So there's a coordinate space. We'll add that in and it kind of made everything go crazy. To put it back, you just hit coordinate space, and uh, in the inspector, we're gonna set it to polar to rectangular. Now, in the fast noise, we're gonna use a different option here. We're gonna go to here, and instead of radial, we're gonna set it to linear. So right here, you can see the fast noise just has these straight lines, and the coordinate space just spins it around. Now, it doesn't match up right here, so what we, all you need to do to fix that, we can zoom in and go to the color, and we just have to shift the starting and ending points just a little bit to get it to match up. So, and now we have a, a spinny, swirly thing. Um, a couple things here, you notice that it's kind of flat and squished. That's because the fast noise is 1920 by 1080. To fix that, we're gonna to go to the image tab, uncheck auto resolution, and we'll do the height of 1920. And that'll make it a square, and we have a kind of a circle pattern. Now we just need to adjust the starting and ending points on the fast noise. 
So starting any points work, work the same way. You could have a, some big spirals or little bitty spirals. It's kind of up to you how you want to do it. You can spin it around and flip it. Um, some really in interesting animation possibilities here. So let's try to get that to line up. I'm just going to adjust the Y. It's off just a little bit. Okay. And now we have a, a, a spinny shape. There's the basic spiral. If you want to adjust the speed, all we got to do is go to the color thing right there, go down. And all we need to do is, as opposed to divide by 25, just divide by a lower number, say, let's say by five, and it's going to spin a lot faster. The last thing I want to show is just how to use this for a few other things, like we have this text here. And let's take the text and merge it in right on top. And we'll set the text of, um, called spiral, get real big. So we can, you can obviously do some blending mode things here. Slow, slow the fast noise down just a bit. And we can also use the fast noise as a mask on the text. So if we wanted to put, the, put it right there, um, the, the, the fast noise spiral is masking out the text. And let's take our coordinate space over here and put that in there. And now we have a spiral effect where the spiral is masking out. And now we have a spiral effect where the spiral is masking out. The so let's take that off. So the fast noise has a couple other options that are interesting to play around with. Let's take the fast noise and put it back as a mask into our background. You can see right now that, uh, let's go to the color thing. So the type is gradient and the gradient type is linear. So we can get these lines here and they can, they can play through just like the, uh, just like the spiral and the circles. Also, as opposed to linear, there's a reflect, which takes the center point and has things go in and out. There's a square option, which is interesting. So you can uh, adjust the square just like you did the circle. Um, you can have big squares or smaller squares, move it around using these uh, start and end points. Really, uh, you make some really interesting animations this way. And there is also a cross option. So the cross, um, basically does this kind of an effect right here. So really there's a lot of different things you can do with this. I thought this was kind of fun, so I thought I'd put a real quick video together about it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more videos about DaVinci Resolve, filmmaking, and a lot more fun stuff.